Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also my servant will be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think she was born in 1902, Maria Goretti, near Ancona, Italy. Young girl, there are like four or five kids in the family. Her father dies. So the mother is left to take care of the family. And they basically moved in with another family uh, to share expenses. She, w- she worked the farm, Maria Goretti, and the other family members did what they had to do. She was around 12 when this happened, and there was a young man, a boy basically, a little older than her, maybe early teens, maybe like 19, and he was attracted to her, you know, pretty young girl, nothing unusual about that. But the problem is his attraction was lust. He lusted after Maria. We'll talk about that in a second. Maria, she's... um, girl from a nice family, and she struggled with her parents to make ends meet. She was very devoted to Jesus and received her first communion, was very happy about that. In those days, it was, it was a big festivity, it is today too, but for her country church, you know, not too many people, it was special, it was special. So she had a special bond in prayer with Jesus. As time goes on, and we hear what's going on in the letter today to the Corinthians, Paul is reminding us that our bodies are not for immorality. We have to use our bodies according to God's will. And what happens is, he says, if you use your body for immorality, you're not doing God's will, because your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, we all believe that. I, I grew up as a, as a child believing that, that our bodies were temples of the Holy Spirit. So with that in mind, Maria Goretti keeps her temple, her body, you know, pure. She's a little kid, 12 years old. However, this young man who lived in the, the same farmhouse was attracted to her and more than once advanced toward her amorously. And she shunned him each time. Then finally, he trapped her in a room in the barn and there tried to seduce her. She absolutely refused. And she's 12 years old. It's a child. And he, again, hurt her. He attempted to rape her, but she would not have it. And he was so angry that he stabbed her several times. Taken to the hospital, she dies. She's 12 years old. And the youngest martyr that we have in modern times, especially, especially in the light of yesterday or this week, the Pope talked about the number of martyrs that we have in the 20th century, 21st century, uh, that we, we, we don't talk about that much, okay? Uh, un, unproclaimed martyrs. And there are so many martyrs that, that we realize that someone who dies for his faith is a martyr. Just off the bat, top of the examples, there was a group of people coming from Nigeria in a boat. They were escaping, as we've heard that several times this past few years. And some of the people on this boat, most of them were Christian, but the Muslims on the boat tortured Mm -hmm. them and threw them overboard, and they drowned. Now, the Pope makes a comment on that, that these people... You don't know them, you don't know their names, but are Christian martyrs, people who die because of their faith. So we, we know St. Paul, we know Peter, and know the apostles, they were martyrs because they were proclaiming their faith. These people that I just mentioned were martyred only because of their faith. 
and the Pope made a comment on that. And, and the fact that there are so many martyrs in our society today that we don't name, and he put, put together a little commission that would maybe get these names together, maybe to honor them properly. But he's also talking about non-Catholic martyrs, people who die for their faith, who are Christian, who die for their Christian faith, even though they're not Catholics, they're also martyrs, they're Christian martyrs. So we have a vast um, array of the church triumphant and the church suffering. Church triumphant is heaven, church suffering is here on earth. And the church suffering is growing every day. Not only by blood, like Marie Goretti was killed for her faith, because she maintained her purity. She did not want to defile her body. She kept telling the, the perpetrator, it's a sin, it's a sin. Obviously, he didn't really care. We'll continue that in a second, though. And so people are martyred for their faith, the obvious way, but there are people who are martyred because of their faith without blood. People who own some or are part of some communities throughout the country whose churches get burnt down. People who, priests throughout Europe and, and Asia and Nigeria, kidnapped and martyred because they're priests. So the idea of martyrdom is very current. It's not an old thing. It's not an ancient practice. So going back to Maria's um, perpetrator, in, in jail, he realized what he did. The story is, she forgave him on her deathbed in the hospital. She told her mother, forgive this guy, forgive him. You know, he does not know what he was doing. That happens, and she appears to him in the jail cell, and she's giving him lilies, sign of purity. When he takes the lilies, they burn up in his hand. There's a vision. And he remembers that, and he tells people that while he's in jail. And he was in jail like 30 years. When he's released, he gives himself over to one of the religious orders and becomes a helper, like a brother around the house, around the, the, the mission. So her example of forgiveness got to him. Her example of forgiveness, the martyr who forgives. There's no greater martyr who forgave than Jesus. And we mentioned that in the responsorial psalm today. Into your hands I commend my spirit. That's Jesus. So put the whole thing together, representing and standing up for our faith at times is like a martyrdom. But when we do that, we're standing up with Christ and he's with us. Whether it's being hurt because we're Christian, being insulted because we're Christian, or just being Christian as a minority in a social group. Standing up for what we believe, knowing that Christ gives us the strength to proclaim our faith.